Hey Steve here and this video is a Photoshop warp tool tutorial where you'll learn how to use the warp tool to tweak and improve the composition of an image when it wasn't possible to achieve the same thing in camera. So if you like this video hit the thumbs up button to let me know so I can keep making more just like it and remember to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell notification icon so that YouTube notifies you next time I publish a video. So this is the image that we're working on in this example and looking at the foreground here this rock wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be in uh, in the frame and it was basically impossible for me to achieve the effect I wanted um, with the balance of the objects in the frame because it would have meant standing five feet deep in ice cold glacial water so I was perched on a small rock um, doing what I could to get the composition as best I could but it still wasn't as good as I wanted it now the thing is this image at the moment that you're seeing is the end result of this tutorial that I'm about to show you. And this here is the original raw file. So hopefully, when you were looking at this image, you weren't thinking, hey, that looks really warped and dodgy. Uh, and if so, then that's uh, that's a win for this technique. So yeah, sometimes when you're comparing your before and your after, it can kind of throw you off a bit and you think, you know, God, I don't know if I've got away with that. But in this case, hopefully if it looks okay as I was just talking you through that first section, then you know, hopefully that means that this is a, uh, is a handy technique to, to have and to use. So for now, I'll just hide this layer and start the process over again so that we can see how exactly I achieved that. And uh, yeah, this is similar to a recent couple of videos that I made um, using the warp tool. But this time we're basically going to select pretty much the whole bottom half of an image. So I'm going to grab the rec uh, rectangular marquee tool and just grab the image at uh, the bottom half of the image. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going through that center section there where there's kind of a lot of fuzzy sort of fluffy detail there with the, the greens and the, the bushes and that. And the reason for that will become apparent a bit later. And yeah, so I'm just going to copy and paste this bottom section. So command or control C to copy, Command or Control V to paste. And now something I didn't show in the previous tutorial with the barn, um, but is a handy thing to do, is uh, convert this layer now to a smart object. So let's do that. And once that finishes processing, we've got a smart object. And now I'm gonna go and grab the warp tool from Edit, Transform and Warp. And now what I'm going to do, this is going to seem a bit extreme um, as I'm doing it, but hopefully, like I said, the end result uh, pays off. So I'm just going to grab these control points and just move all of these bits and pieces over here on the right and try and get them down into the left corner a bit just to add a little bit more balance to this bottom left-hand corner. So trying not to make everything look distorted. So obviously this works well when you know, you've know you got all these rocks created by nature, they're all kind of natural shapes. This isn't gonna be as uh, effective if you have a lot of man-made straight lines like buildings in your shot. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not a technique for every scenario, but it can help in certain situations. So I'm not gonna go too far. Uh, I think it's just on the edge of looking warped. So I think we'll leave it there and I'll just hit return. And now the reason quickly just for turning this layer into a smart object was because now if I go back, if I want to make any adjustments, if I go back to the transform warp tool, this will uh, open up the tool in the exact same position that I left it. Whereas if I hadn't have created a smart object from this layer, then that would have basically rendered the transform into the pixels of the image. And then I would essentially have to basically re-warp the image. And yeah, I think this is just a better way to go. So now I can just make any minor tweaks that I want using the tool as I left it before hitting the, uh, hitting the enter key. So, all right, let's uh, submit that again. Hit return or enter on the keyboard. And 
again, so here's the before, now here's the after. Let's just see out of curiosity how close I was. Yeah, not exactly the same, but this was this was my original one um, at the start of the tutorial. This is the uh, the new version. So actually, let's see. Okay, let's go back to the transform warp tool. Let's see if we can just make it a little bit closer. I think this main boulder in the middle just appeared a bit bigger, and I think we can kind of achieve that by stretching these corner points out a bit. And okay, I think that will that will do. Anyway, so the final stage of this technique is just to add that layer mask to this layer. And then just in case, so I'm going to have a look along the edge of where this selection was copied and pasted. And with a black brush, I'm just going to brush through there to remove that straight line, that copy paste line. So just running that through the middle there. And hey presto, there we go. That is uh, the before image. This is the after image and hopefully if you don't see the before image, then this after image is going to seem just as natural and realistic, um, even given the extreme warping of those boulders in the uh, in the river. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you can find it useful in your Photoshop workflow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.